How was the how the Rebbe is both our father, general, and king? What should our part of the relationship be, and how do we balance it? I really don't think we get to choose that. I think our relationship with the Rebbe has to do with our upbringing, our experience, and our personality. But I don't know there's too many people who have dynamic relationships with the Rebbe. I don't think anybody turns switches on and off. To some people, the Rebbe is a father, and he's always a father. To some people, the Rebbe is a teacher, and he's always a teacher. And to some people, the Rebbe is a king or a general, and I'm putting those two together. It means he gives orders that we follow. And they're always that way. Um, my father was like a My father is 85 and a half years old. My father came to this country when he was 15 years old in 1953. The Rebbe was a Rebbe for two years. Officially. Three years unofficially. The kind of attention he got from the Rebbe was very much father-son. Very much. Very close. But it was never father-son that you could sit in his lap and be cute. It was, it was a much more respectful relationship, but it was very much a relationship of father-son. I never had that relationship with the Rebbe. Because by the time I grew up, the Rebbe was a big Rebbe who was very far away. I, you have to remember, I didn't even have Yechidus, my bar mitzvah. Didn't he have younger? As a kid, but I barely remember. The Rebbe that I knew was a king on a pedestal. And the number one emotion we felt about the Rebbe was really, it's more than fear, it was shame. You didn't want the Rebbe to look at you because he wasn't going to see such good things. You always felt like you're disappointing the Rebbe. And you always felt that you have to serve. I think that the relationship with the Rebbe is very much like the school thing. Right? A lot of kids go to school for year after year after year after year, and they never really think about why they're going to school. They never really think about whether this is good for them or not good for them, because they never chose it at the outset, and they never really made the conscious decision to make it their own. For many Lubavitcher chassidim, why am I Lubavitcher? Because my parents are. And that's unfortunate. Do you still think that's true nowadays? Oh, absolutely. It's, it's always true. Um, the only yeah. people it's not true for is the people who were not born Lubavitch, who became Lubavitch. They know exactly why they became Lubavitch, and they know exactly what that ever means to them. So whether their relationship is father-son, whether their relationship is teacher-student, whether their relationship is king-subject, it's a relationship that has an enormous amount of intent and focus. Because I joined this because I want this. If you're born in Lubavitch, you know, one of the things I tell my people all the time, and, and I believe that this is really true, Hasidus has a huge Achilles heel. Hasidus has an Achilles heel. Hasidus has a problem. Hasidus' problem is it's a very mature learning. The nature of the material is very grown up. Not, not because it's hard, because it's, it's deep, it's serious, it's about life, and it has to do with the most mature parts of ourselves. We teach Hasidus to children. Children are babies. I mean, to me and you, high school kids are babies. <laughs> so you're learning a lot of Hasidus. It's interesting for some girls. Some girls find it absolutely boring. Okay, but even if it's interesting, the, the, the way Hasidus is supposed to change you when you're 12 or 13 or 14 doesn't exactly work. So at some point, you keep learning it. I, I say to people all the time, when you start learning Hasidus when you were immature, Hasidus seemed to you an immature limud. When you grow up, you still look at it that way. The person who was not born a chassid, who became a chassid as an adult, values the same thing so much more because he knows what it is because he made a conscious decision. So, for a Lubavitcher boy and girl, there is this unique challenge that we teach chassidus in the earliest of ages. Because the Rebbe holds that nowadays chassidus is a question of pekuach nefashis and the whole business. In other words, it's a, it's a matter of, of keeping us pushed from. That's what we learn chassidus. That's the idea. Your relationship with the Rebbe has to cross that bridge. And when it crosses that bridge, there's no dynamics. It's a father-son relationship or a father-daughter relationship. For some people, especially smart people, deeper people, it's a teacher-student relationship. I would say they're not, I'm sorry. 
Better and worse is immaterial. It's it's really, it's it's um, what's what matters is two things. What are the two things that matter? Okay, I don't know. What are they? Let me hear the two words, the magic words: success and meaning. So yeah, whatever. It's nicer to have this kind of relationship. This kind of relationship. The relationship has to work. So you need to choose to be a chaser as an individual person, and the relationship will be whatever you are. It'll be a father son, a daughter son, a daughter father. It'll be teacher student or king subject, based on your personality, based on your exposure, and based on your inspiration. Does it have to be one of those defined ones, or if it just be one of those? It is Rebbe Chassid. Rebbe Chassid has dynamics. Are you trying to say that young people should not exist? I didn't say that at all. I said young people have to grow up. And when they grow up, chidus have to take on more meaning. I'm going to repeat this point again. You, I don't think you get to choose the relationship. The, church, the relationship has a lot to do with your upbringing, a lot. Probably more than anything else. In other words, you'll be the kind of chas that your father is or your mother is. If they have a relationship that's very much about bittel and subservience, that's probably where you're going to go. If your parents, for whatever reason, have this chus to have a parent child relationship with the Rebbe, you'll probably be more likely to have that. And uh, if you're especially involved in the Rebbe's Torah, you may have the relationship of Rav and Talmud. You understand? It's To have a dynamic relationship with the Rebbe takes a lifetime. It doesn't happen in a minute. You're, 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 you're young. The important thing is to choose a real relationship, to be honest about it. And what's true about our Rebbe, more than any other Chabad Rebbe, Chabad Hasidim, had a certain kind of relationship with their Rebbe. And it wasn't father-son, it really wasn't. It was Rebbe Chassid, it was much more distant. Father-son is really a new idea in our generation. What's true about our Rebbe is he'll be the kind of Rebbe to you as you are the kind of Chassid. Meaning, if there's 12 girls or 15 girls in this room, those of you who have a simpler child, parent relationship with the Rebbe, the Rebbe can treat you like a father. Those of you who are in a higher level or in a different level and you have more the, the soldier, master kind of relationship, the Rebbe is going to be the kind of Rebbe to you that you're his chassid. Why do you say that's greater if you need to give more to your father than to your teacher? Because the greatest thing we can do in our relationship with the Rebbe for ourselves is serve. But isn't is father-son also serving? No. It's love. I don't see how that connects to the issue. Which in Rebbe Chassid relationship is a job that we take on. We have a job that we choose. No one's forcing us. You don't have to be a Chassid. To be a Chassid of our Rebbe, he should be your but my master, my, my, my teacher, my guide, right? He directs my life. It's a choice we make. That's hard enough in itself. The idea that a human being who you never physically met is the most important person in your life is very profound. You have to understand what a Rebbe means. You have to understand who the Rebbe is. You have to understand why he matters to you, why you matter to him. There's so many preliminary things. You're going to start worrying about nuance. The important thing is to reach a stage in your life where you actually feel, I'm his chassid and he's my Rebbe, and mean it. You'll worry about the details and the levels later. It's, 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 a, it's a lot. Do you think this like, um, maturity and depth of the relationship comes with, like, mostly with time? It only comes with time with if, you, if, you, if you acknowledge the need to be mature about it. I'm telling you, if you look at Lubavitchers and Hasidus, you'll see a significant percentage of Lubavitchers who are 30, 40, 50, and they still look at Hasidus as a bunch of stories. That's what they got as children, and they never get past it. They never appreciate, first of all, that the stories are not just stories, they're history and their life. And second of all, the stories are a, v- a venue leading to the Torah, and the Torah leads to the Avoida. Because when they were little kids, they had an immature approach to it, they, they still look at it that way. And if they learned another subject, when they were older, they respect it more, and they think it's more sophisticated, they think it's smarter, they think it's more grown up, and really, it's not more grown up. Their experience of it is more grown up, because they encountered it at a more grown up stage in their lives. So you need to choose it. For it to work for you, you need to choose it. And when you do, 
yes, it grows over time. Of course it grows over time. So the majority of it grows time, is that like from accelerating? It really grows over time. And the older you get, the more it grows, yes. It's less like simple, no? Well, there's simcha and there's tamil, if you wanted to be fancy about it. Any other questions or comments? Say that the father and son, they're the new thing for this generation, you mean our Rebbe or after Yosem? Our Rebbe. No, no. The idea of, of focusing on how much the Rebbe loves us, which was always true, and how much the Rebbe accepts us no matter what we do, and no, we're never bad in his eyes, and he loves us unconditionally, those things were always true, but they were never part of the focus of a chassid. The focus of a chassid was to become a better Jew because of the Rebbe. And in some cases, the focus of a chassid was to serve the Rebbe. So now, we have that much more than ever. The thing which is more new in this generation than in earlier generations is not father's son, it's shliach and mishaleach, service. But the whole idea, I once had an argument with a, very, a close relative of mine, because I, 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 I grew up with a real serious father. My father's Zagazunzayin does not see the Rebbe as his father, he's the Rebbe as his king. He has, he has a much more mature relationship. And there was an argument about the idea that Rebbe is your father and he loves you and you have to relate to him as a father and this whole thing. So I asked that person, let me ask you, you do a delicious juicy Aveda. You just roll into the oil and say, hi, Tati, take me as I am. He said, well, I stand outside. I said, why, he's your father. Yeah, but, you know what I'm saying? The old model of Chassid, Chassid is Chabad. And the Chabad Chassid relationship, in the parameters of Chassid Chabad, in the serious sense of the word, was incredibly distant. It was a relationship based on respect and service. We don't have that after your model. You, you have to choose it. We don't have to, you know, Thomas, you have any sisters and brothers who are married in Shlichus? Or cousins? You're the oldest. Yeah. You know how much sacrifice Shlichus involves? You're seeing like that yeah, distance I'm and respect. Like the shame, like we don't have that. I mean, I, I don't have that. Okay, you know, when we were growing up, we always used to say, I can ask my wife, that the girls had a different relationship with the Rebbe than the boys, and I think the Rebbe also related to them differently. The boys have more of a relationship of shame and responsibility, and the girls have more of a relationship with love. I think the Rebbe treated women differently than treated men in this aspect. Um, but again, your upbringing plays probably the biggest role, your personality plays a secondary role, and then as you live life, you develop a more meaningful understanding of what this relationship is. Okay, we're going to call it a night, people. I'm talking 53 minutes and 56 seconds. Thing, Say two things. Do you think that um, the less, like the closer, like the father-son relationship brings up home, like less, like less, it's like less, the Rebbe is expecting less from us and he, we actually do less from The him. Rebbe is not becoming only your father because you're only his daughter. So the Rebbe so has all the relationships. He's your teacher. He's your king. In, in mystical terms, he's also your source. The neshama of the chassid comes from the neshama of the Rebbe. And he's also your father. So all those relationships exist from his end. We're just not tapping into all those so relationships. So it's us highlighting it versus the Rebbe highlighting yeah. it. So yeah. we're highlighting, our generation highlights We're the choosing. Rebbe. We're choosing. Well, the Rebbe helps. Well. The Rebbe is such an interesting mix between being a, such a wonderful father and such a demanding general. It's hard to appreciate the extent to which the Rebbe did both of those things. He was so loving and so demanding. And somehow it works with the Rebbe. Nobody else can do what the Rebbe does. Love the way he loves and demand the way he demands. Only the Rebbe can do that. Mm -hmm.